The Tell Me More Tavern in Incident. Landon, Landon was working out in the field, cutting and chopping and chewing up the little bits of wood to little, littler bits with the giant machine he had. He didn't remember what it was called. Either way, he couldn't stop thinking about what his best friend had told him concerning the family that had moved into his old house, which he'd scoffed at, of course, in an attempt to feign disinterest in who they were. It hadn't been worked, and what his best friend Lawrence Northern, or Law for short, had informed him of, of kept playing throughout his mind. Despite this, he buzzed away at various trees with the chainsaw he had on his person, taking out whatever aggression he was feeling on them. He did not stop until he cut down an entire field of them, which he thought was a good enough was a good enough day's work. Returning himself and his chainsaw to the back and respective driver's seat of his truck, he found himself thinking still of the family who now occupied his home. Well, ex-home. He was surprised he didn't know who lived there yet. The town of Berkshire, Washington was a small one. Putting the truck into gear, he decided he'd go out and have a look at the old place, see if he could find, see anything before returning home. To his new home, not much further away, and though it was smaller, it wasn't such a bad place, though these were thoughts far outside of Landon's mind, Landon's mind's forefront as he rolled down the street towards not his new home, but his old. It was surprisingly close to where he worked, which wasn't far from his present home, making it an easy place to come casually across on his way home, and so it wasn't very long until he came upon it, rolling slowly to a stop and narrowing his vision to see whatever he saw out onto, on the front lawn. There was a girl. She wasn't doing anything except swinging on an old swing that Landon knew hadn't been there before. She had light blonde hair and pale white skin, which made her stick out like a sore thumb against the greenery behind and around her. The house loomed there large, dark and imposing somehow, though its color was white. It stood a long way off, and so did Landon. Fortunately, the girl could not see him, or hadn't yet, so he started his way back home, rolling softly down the street. He'd come down towards where it, it, it stood just a half mile or so from the old a few houses down, but the distance was greater than just a few houses down. When he reached it, he unloaded his truck, took one glance at his new home, which could only be described as quaint and cozy, though perhaps not in the most emboldening senses of the words, and sighed. He walked towards it, leaving the supplies he had on him in the truck, which included a tool belt with a hammer, handsaw, and a few other things in it. When he reached the front door, he extended his hand out to open it, but quickly recoiled, turned around, and headed back towards his truck. He got in, ignited the engine, and drove off. It was only a few minutes before he reached his destination, the Tell Me More Tavern, a local bar. He walked in, and it wasn't 20 minutes before he was half-cocked drunk at the bar, listening to some loudmouth talk about some place he'd bought down the road just a ways. He sat there, shouting about how small and inconvenient the size and location were, complained that he had to install a new tire swing for his young 17-year-old daughter, yelled, yelled, and yelled some more, until finally Landon couldn't take it anymore. Without a word, he approached the man from behind, though he did nothing but stand staring at the back of the man's head, which had a bald spot slowly growing. The man yelled some more, but soon stopped as he noticed Landon behind him. With a chuckle and a swivel of his chair on which he sat, he turned to face him, a presumptuous grin on his, on his face. He grinned slyly, looking down at him, though he sat lower on his stool. Through glasses and a small pointed nose said, Who are you, mate? Where are you from, Landon asked. Australia, mate, said the man. What's it to you? Landon eyed him up and down. He was a slight man, very skinny. He came across as almost intellectually, or as almost intellectual, really, despite all of the shouting and yelling, but Landon at that point didn't much care. He grabbed the man by the shoulders and headbutted him, sending him hur hurling to the floor, nose bloodied and spilling out everywhere. The man shouted again, What the fuck? He, as he tried to stand, Landon kicked him in the groin and then his abdomen. Once, twice, then a number of times before the man went completely limp. The barkeep just stared at him, shocked. Nobody, as, as few people as there were, did anything to stop Landon from doing what he did. After a while, he stopped, spit on him, threw a couple bills on the bar, and stormed off into the night, tripping over himself. He woke up the next day in his own bed with no memory of what had happened. Staggering into the kitchen, he made himself some breakfast, fixed up a few things that he never needed done, took a shower, and got ready to go to work. Just as he was about to leave, he heard a knock at the front door. Then three, then six. He threw on his leather jacket in a hurry, made his way to the front, and opened it. On the other side of the door, three cops. Landon Carvajal, said, one, said the one at the front. Landon nodded. You know me, Joseph. Just a formality. Can we come in? Joseph's face was serious. 
Sure, replied Landon, halfway out of breath. What can I help you three with? We were hoping you could help us, said the police officer. Okay, said Landon, gritting his teeth. With what? Mind if we have a seat? The officer pointed at the kitchen table from the hallway where they stood. Yeah, sure, said Landon, taking a seat and then offering one to each of the officers. They all sat. Landon ran his hands through his hair, clearly concerned about what they wanted. So, what do we need to talk about? He put a hand to his forehead, clearly having a migraine from the prior night. Were you out drinking last night? asked Joseph. The other two cops, one blonde, one black haired, stared at him ominously. They were young and Landon didn't recognize them. Finally, he shrugged. He came home from work. He went to sleep. You didn't go to the Tullymore Tavern last night? asked the blonde cop, whose badge read Bjornsson. Landon shook his head. No, he replied, quickly putting your hand to his head and groaning in discomfort. Joseph scoffed. So that's not a hangover then? I don't remember, started Landon. I woke up in my bed this morning, that's all I can remember. You got drunk and walked home, said Bjornsson, or maybe that there's more to it than that, even. Landon shook his head. More to it? What does he mean, Joseph? He asked and looked at Joseph. Joseph sighed. A woman was raped last night. A little girl, really. The three continued to stare at him. Landon stared back, mouth open. And you think that I had something to do with that? You assaulted a man last night, Mr. Peterson. Said the dark-haired cop. Mr. Carvajal, said the dark-haired cop. Who are you? asked Landon mildly aggressively. No. Mr. Peterson, said the dark-haired cop. Who are you? asked Landon mildly aggressively. The cop grinned at him. The detective, I'm Detective Sergeant McRoy. I'm heading the investigation of the rape of this minor. Landon shook his head. I didn't rape anyone. Joseph sighed. Joseph, said Landon, you gotta believe me. And whoever got beat up last night, I don't even remember that. Isn't it possible then, said Joseph, that you might not have remembered the rape? No, stated Landon. Burenton sighed through gritted teeth. Well, we don't know whether or not you did anything to that little girl, but we do know that you beat the living hell out of her father, so get up, you're going down to the station. Landon half sighed, laughed. Joseph, I didn't do anything. You heard him, Landon. Stand up, put your hands behind your back. <laughs> Landon scoffed, but complied. Who was raped? Don't you mean who did I rape? asked Bjornsson. Landon half laughed again. I didn't rape a little girl. Well, she's a minor, said the sergeant detective. Seventeen, not that it makes the crime any better or worse. Landon sighed. Who did I beat up, apparently? They told him as they walked him to and put him inside one of the police cars. A man named Lewis Jackson. The man who bought your old house. Said he was shouting about it just before you did what you did. I figured you lost lost it at that, made your way back to your old place, raped her, then came home, I added Bjornsson. That's ridiculous, Landon nearly shouted. You'll be cooperating in a police line, line up later tonight where she'll hopefully identify your ass and we can place you in a nice cozy jail cell for a while. Now Bjornsson said Sergeant Detective McRoy, we don't know that he did it just yet. But she's got your DNA all over her, added Bjornsson. Bet she's got your DNA all over her, added Bjornsson. Bjornsson, shouted Joseph. Can it? Yes, sir. He slammed the door to the police car and they drove to the station, a small building downtown just a couple blocks from the bar. Once they were there, they escorted Landon into an empty cell, locked him up, and went off somewhere else. After they left, Landon took a, sm a look around to find it was the only one in the jail cells. It was a fairly small town after all, he supposed clenching his hands onto the bars in front of him until his knuckles turned white. He exhaled shakily, running his fingers through his hair again. He was too busy about worrying about his this 17-year-old that he couldn't really worry about missing work, though he knew his boss would be angry. After a while of trying to remember the night prior, giving up, he sat down on his cell's bench, a hard plastic thing that was extremely uncomfortable. He tried to lie down, but to no avail. He wasn't getting any sleep. Besides, with his thoughts on the girl, Mr. Jackson's daughter, apparently, he was too preoccupied. Had he really done something like that? And her father, he didn't even remember beating the man. The prob though apparently he had. Besides, he sort of remembered it now, vaguely, but the rape, nothing. If he were religious, he'd, he would have prayed, but he figured it would do him no good anyway. Just words and clenched hands to his mind. It was a long while before anyone showed up to let him out. But once they did, they cuffed him again, and then dragged him down the hall the lineup room, which Landon surmised rather quickly as there were four other guys standing against the measured wall. They put him right in the middle, uncuffed him, told him to put his hands to his sides, relax, and look forward. He did, he did what they said, nervously awaiting the results. It was a few minutes before they called everyone out, all of whom Landon had no recognition of. When they pulled him out of the room, they took him to another cell. Only this one had no bars. Landon awaited the results. In a moment, the 17-year-old Landon presumed it was her. 
were standing in front of him. Bjornsson and Joseph by our sides. Come on, called Bjornsson, gesturing. She didn't ID you. You're free to go. Landon and I had the girl a moment. She was short and thin with long blonde hair and crystal blue eyes. He remembered having seen her on, on his way home from work, though he'd previously forgotten. With a cuff and scuffle, with a cough and a scuffle, he stood up and left the cell. The officers and the girl followed behind him. When they got in front of the jail cell, the jail, just as he was about to leave, the girl called out to him shakily. You didn't do it, did you, mister? She had, she had an American accent. Landon turned to face her. He looked her up and down and shook his head. No. What's your name? She asked eagerly. Haven't they told you, Landon gestured towards Bjornsson? I forget. More like you want to hear me say it, but all right, he muttered. It's Landon Carvajal. Okay, she whispered, holding her right arm with her left. See, see you around? Landon gave her an odd look, then muttered again, see you around. He walked out of the jail cell and started walking home. It began to rain.